this is an open meeting of the Arlington Police Civilian Advisory Board Study Committee. It's being conducted remotely consistent with the act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, which among other things allows public meetings to be conducted remotely until April of 2022 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Michael Cunningham. I'm Deputy Town Council, substituting for Town Council Doug Heim. And I have four additional notes before we begin the meeting. Number one, persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing an accurate record of the meeting. Two, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment or by telephone and those persons are not required to identify themselves or register in advance of the meeting. Three, all votes this evening will be taken by roll call. And finally, number four, participants and folks watching can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website. Thank you, Laura. Um, I'm gonna, Sanjay, do you wanna do roll call? I, I can I don't know if you have the list in front of you, Mike. I do have the list. If you want me to take the roll call, I can do that now. That would be great. Thank you. Karen Bishop. She has told us she's not coming. Ann Brown. Here. Michael Brownstein. Here. Elliot Elkin. Here. Kerry Fallon. Chief Julie Flaherty. Here. Laurel Gibson. That's me, here. Jillian Harvey. Here. Carlos Morales. Mona Motati. Here. Sanjay Newton. Here. Bob Raducchio. Kathy Rogers. He, I am just admitting her, so. She should be here in a sec. There she is. Kathy Rogers. I, I see you there, Kathy. I'm gonna mark her as present. Clarissa Rowe. Susan Ryan Vollmer. Here. And Bob Radokia just signed in. I think he's labeled as Joyce on the screen. Bob, is that you? Bob Radokia responding to roll call? We'll give him a minute. That, 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 that's fine. Okay. I think. Well, certainly there's a quorum present. Great. Thank you. Um, I want to jump right in to talking about the memo that Jill provided us with. Um, first, saying thank you to you for such a thorough and thoughtful account of your experience assisting residents with the complaint process as it now stands. Um, I think I learned a lot and I'm excited to see what other people's questions are. So um, let's start taking questions. Susan. Um, thanks, Laura. Um, it's, thank you so much. Just what Laura just said for this comprehensive summary of your experiences. Um, I'm, I just have a couple of clarifying questions I want to get through quickly because I know your time with us is limited. <clears throat> so my first question is about the second incident you described where it's noted that the police officer declined to engage in a conversation with the resident. And I don't know if this is a question for you, Director Harvey, or for Chief Flaherty. Um, but did the officer explain why they didn't want to talk with the resident? Yeah, um, I'll say something first and then I'll probably pass it to you, um, Chief Flaherty. But I do feel that um, at the time, and I think currently still, there's definitely a tension between officers and community members and kind of this general fear. Um, and I've discussed this with you, Chief Flaherty, this fear that officers have um, that if they do engage with conversation with folks who are upset or want to make a complaint that they're just going to be attacked or not be given the opportunity to kind of explain. 
Um, and so I think that was part of it, but also I feel that they weren't advised to do so as well, because as we know, officers do have certain protections and don't have to um, do certain things. So I think that's related to unions. And so I just want to pass that to Chief Larity to make sure I get the facts there. <laughs> Correct. Um, per the CBA, they, they are not required to speak with a complainant at this time. And the officer at the time when it was brought to his attention um, just felt like he um, it, was, it was an incident involving he had arrived early for a, a paid detail. He was in half uniform, so he had his police uniform on with a sweatshirt over it. His detail wasn't about to start for another 30 minutes. He was sitting in his personal vehicle listening to a talk show and he didn't see the complainant. He didn't make eye contact with her. He was um, caught off guard and he just didn't feel like he needed to defend himself in this. And according to CBA rules, he doesn't have to speak. Okay, That's super helpful to have. Um, my next question, how much time did you spend on these cases? If you're like not exact but um yeah the first case was right when I started and that was a few months I believe it was February and was wrapped up by May um and the second one I mean for that case too each conversation with the resident was always very lengthy at least an hour at the minimum um probably every time we talked so I can't actually really estimate overall how much time was spent with that in particular resident um, but the second case did take a couple of weeks from the initial complaint, the process, and coming to the um, solution. Okay. Um, all right. I want to make sure I'm understanding what your recommendations are. Mm -hmm. So um, it sounds like you're recommending a mechanism for filing anonymous complaints, a mechanism for triaging complaints, assessing at the start of the process what outcomes a resident might want, um, and recommending that someone outside of the police department be assigned to support residents involved in professional standards investigations. Is that an accurate? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, another question, and please don't be offended by this question, okay? <laughs> um, throughout your document, you refer to the fact that you're basing your recommendations on your experiences that you had supporting residents to support these recommendations. Um, is that the sole basis for the recommendations? Cause that's a lot to ask for based on say two anecdotal stories. Um, short answer, no, <laughs> long <Okay>. answer. <laughs> um, I'm glad you brought it up. So these two, I mean, these two incidents just really helped me see the full process that Arlington has. Um, but these recommendations really came out of my experience working in the diversity, equity, inclusion field. Um, and so that encompasses all the time that I've spent thus far in Arlington doing my role. Um, but it also <laughs> includes what I'm learning from other um, communities. So I established, I helped to establish a Massachusetts um, DEI coalition for folks in DEI professions, similar roles as mine um, in other cities and towns across the state. And so we actually meet twice a month um, and have been since February to talk about some of these types of issues and challenges that we get kind of pulled into and how to problem solve. Um, so it's been really helpful to take some of my knowledge from that group and see what other folks are doing in other communities. Um, but my recommendations were also based on what I learned at the Boston Children's Hospital, where I worked for five years before this. Um, and there I was assigned to the autism center, working with patients and families, either seeking evaluations or needing care um, for known diagnosis. But it was really my responsibility to be the first point of contact with them and to ensure that they got the care that they needed. Um, Oftentimes when individuals with disabilities or other identities, so in this case, race, um, but also ethnicity, cultural background, sexual orientation, gender identity, when those things, when people with those intersections of identities get plugged into different systems, um, like healthcare, <laughs> those systems are not set up for those people um, and with their needs in mind. So this is where inequities come into play. Um, 
so my job at Children's was really to help ensure that patients and families didn't have to deal with all of those negative experiences. So that means asking them what language they need, asking them if they need social work involved, those types of things. Um, and then lastly, my career in DEI is really based on a lot of what I learned at Brown University, where I got my master's degree in public policy and public affairs with a focus on social justice issues. Um, so I was also there a member of the Brown Center for Students of Color Advisory Board and another DEI B committee. And so from that, it allowed me to gain expertise in navigating these spaces and particularly when advocacy is a focus. And I think that's for me what the two incidents I was involved in were all about, that advocacy component. Um, and it's really been a privilege to work in Arlington and learn what I have so far through my experiences and my career so far in town. <laughs> that's incredibly helpful. Um, thanks, super helpful. All right. So Based on your expertise, how would you characterize the problem you were trying to solve when you worked with those residents? Yeah, I mean, bouncing off kind of that last statement around advocacy, um, you know, the problem, what I saw that needed to be solved was a problem of trust um, and lack of trust, and that some residents who have had um, based on their own personal experiences with police or experiences of loved ones, friends, family um, that they've had with police, that there is this lack of trust and not feeling comfortable or sometimes safe making complaints when clean complaints need to be justified or when they need to be made. Um, so they come by their fear and it's our job to help build that trust back. Um, you know, police are there to protect and serve. And so they can't do that if the folks they're trying to serve don't trust them. Um, so for me, that was the problem, the need to build trust um, with the people who have good reason not to trust based off of their past experiences. Is that a problem that's unique to Arlington? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, this is a problem that exists in every city and town in the Commonwealth, across the country. <laughs> yeah, not specific here. Okay. And again, don't be offended by this question. So is it safe to say that the recommendations you've made, they're not based at all in deficiencies in Chief Flaherty's leadership or unprofessionalism on the part of Arlington police? Also, absolutely not. I have been extremely impressed with Chief Flaherty as a leader who is determined to make some massive positive changes. Um, her willingness to put in the time to make sure that for these two incidents that these residents in particular were satisfied to me was above and beyond. I, I wasn't expecting it and I'm so thrilled that <laughs> every incident so far I've been a part of has had that response. Um, you know, I shared these stories with the folks in that coalition and the DEI coalition and their responses were, you know, they didn't, they were like, wow, that's amazing. And that they wish that they had that kind of policing in their communities and that it was like that everywhere. So definitely not, <laughs> not based in any deficiencies. Okay. All right. Those were my questions. Apologize for just asking a ton of questions. But... Thank you. Are there any other questions? It's almost like Susan used to be a journalist. She's got all these questions. <laughs> um, I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask Jill. You know, you sort of talked through, or, or Susan actually sort of talked through the the recommendations. I wondered if if you wanted to sort of talk through them for people that you know. We read them before, but you know, if if you wanted to expand on what you wrote at all. Yeah. Um. So it's actually funny, the class I was in earlier today, we were focused highly on appreciative inquiry. So I feel like this is an opportunity to bake that into what this committee can do. Um, but all of the recommendations that I'm suggesting, um, they are rooted in the needs of people who through their lived experiences, um, again, either themselves, family, friends, whoever it is, um, they just don't have a lot of faith in police. And so, 
it doesn't matter if it was with an Arlington police officer or someone else. It's just, this is kind of what we have to address. And that starts with, um, again, back to trust. How are we going to build that trust so that these fears that some residents do have, they are valid, but they do need to be taken seriously. And we need to also let them know that we are serious about creating a community where everyone does feel safe. Um, so what we know is that when you put these types of things in place, they don't just help residents who otherwise would remain silent, they help everyone. Um, and for me, it's more about, you know, the recommendation about asking what a complainant's needs or outcomes are. We won't know what they want unless we ask. So bringing folks more into the conversation and asking questions um, to allow for that community building that needs to take place. Thank you. That's helpful for, for me to hear. Before think, Jill has to run off for her. I think Bob. I oh, Bob, Bob. That's what, uh, Bob, go ahead. OK, a question, an anonymous complaint. What would the mechanism for that be? How would who? How would you file it? What would you write something? Do you call somebody? What would the process be for it to be anonymous? So, yeah, I've actually thought about that a little bit. And so I do also ask that um, for these recommendations that this is something the committee can also explore further. But one way I could envision that would be having either an online form or again, if we instituted that sort of triage line, allowing for folks to be able to speak to someone and not necessarily disclose their identity, again, because of that fear, because of potential fear of retaliation, but so that it's documented. Because again, if we don't know that these types of complaints are out there or because they're not being reported, this is an opportunity to get a real glimpse of what's actually happening and how people are really feeling. Um, and that being anonymous adds that layer of safety for folks who really wouldn't consider making a complaint at all. And I think those types of situations would have to be dealt with differently because you obviously can't you know, speak to a victim if they don't wanna be identified, but at least the behaviors and the incidents are being reported and they're being recorded so that if we start to see a trend or something, then you can start to inform how some training needs to be changed or how some cultural competency needs to be added. So you can use it to kind of gather more data. And who would be the person or group that would uh, work the problem at that point? You, you receive it and then where does it go? Does it go someplace else or into a committee or a group of people? Or, so I think that that's I, that, part that's of what would need to be flushed out with the idea. So if it's just kind of building up a collection of those types of reports, I think looking at that over time, we would be able to make some decisions on what needs to happen moving forward. Um, unless there was something specific that was actionable that the reporting person wanted, we would need to consider how to do that. Because again, it's a little tough to do a full investigation if you don't have a victim um, who wants to be named or knowing of witnesses. So that piece would need to be worked out. But I think being able to know that you are getting some of that information that you probably wouldn't have before is helpful to be able to identify areas where improvements within the police department can be made. Okay, that's good for now. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything before Jill runs off to the select board meeting? Thank you so much for fitting us into your evening and answering so many questions. Um, and uh, good luck tonight. <laughs> Thanks. Round two. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I will Bye. see you next time. Okay. Um, so hold on. I've got my agenda here. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is any updates from committees or constituencies that people have met with. I think since our last meeting, some of you have had meetings um, to report on. Who wants to go first? Anybody? 
Susan. Um, the Rainbow Commission met a few weeks ago and I was able to give them an update on the status report, the, the interim report that we published. And um, I think I emphasized mostly talking about the various models of oversight that, that are outlined in the report and that we've looked at. And it was a really engaged discussion. I, I, I don't know why I was surprised. I shouldn't be surprised, but, um, and I wish I'd been able to record the conversation because there were so many ideas that came out of that conversation. And um, the commission is going to give feedback. Uh, it, it hasn't determined yet quite how it'll do it. I suspect we'll be just writing up um, largely our own experiences of um, things we heard from members of the community in the summer of 2020, so. Um, Anne, have you met with anybody? Had any feedback to give to us? I always try to remember where the uh, unmute button is. <laughs> um, we did meet, um, uh, the Council on Aging Board takes a break over the summer, so we had a pretty full agenda for our first meeting. So um, I have shared all of our documents and the questions with the committee. They are looking forward to figuring out a mechanism to gain some more information from our constituents. Um, and they they have some feedback that they'd like to share as well, but I'm, I'm not really ready to, to do that tonight. Okay. Hopefully soon. Thank you. Um, Elliot and Mona, do we, I don't know, school's only been going for about a month, but I didn't know if you had had the chance to talk to your peers to get any insight from people at school, either one of you. Um, so far, nothing that big, just because there's been a lot of things going on with the beginning of the school year and the construction. So Dr. Jenger is very busy. Um, but we can definitely get on that. Yeah. Great. Well, we can talk about that more when we talk about the communications update and th think about how we all can be helpful to you guys in reaching out to the younger population. Um, let's see. Sorry, I lost what I have. Uh, Kathy, uh, anything from the Human Rights Commission? No, we meet next week. I'm on the agenda. And I'm hoping to have the same positive experience that Susan had with some rich discussion. Um, you know, uh, uh, we'll see. Okay. Uh, next is, I think that's all the, um, Karen's not here, so we don't have youth services. I think that's all of the constituencies. Um, uh, Michael, no. Michael. Michael. Oh, sorry, Michael. I didn't see you. No, sorry. Gonna, no, no worries. Uh, we're going to meet as well next week. Uh, we, okay. we, we were originally going to do it on, uh, in September, but it was Yom Kippur, so okay. we postponed it till next week. Great. Thank you. And um, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is a communications update from Susan. Um. So at our next meeting, October 27th, that's when we're in hoping members of the public show up to give feedback on um, this process. I know that Jill is organizing um, an email to go out from the town, inviting people to join us October 27th and also pointing them to the report. Um, Chief Flaherty and I, I think have talked about the desire for the police department to send out a similar invitation from um, uh, to the folks who subscribed to the police department's newsletter. Um, your Arlington has published information about our process and um, the meeting. I think something will be in the advocate tomorrow um, and it's on in some of the Facebook groups and on the Arlington list. Um, in terms of other communications updates, um, Jill is nearly done with the Google form 
that we're creating so people can provide feedback if they're not able to attend a meeting. They'll also have the op op option of providing feedback anonymously if they want to or confidentially rather. And she is also setting up meetings, I believe for the first two weeks of November with the constituencies that we've discussed. And those would be people who live in public housing, um, I'm not, I'm, you know what, I'm not gonna remember the group. I should have made a list, um, but with those constituencies and she's also going to create two meetings that are basically open to anyone. One will be during the week and one will be on the weekend. And again, to make it as easy as possible for people to offer feedback. And I think those are the updates. Great. Um, you started to mention the October 27th meeting. The next thing on our agenda was to well, I'm sorry, about... I had I had one other. Okay, go ahead. Communication. So I I went ahead and set up. Um, I attend the First Parish Unitarian Universalist um, in the center, and so I had had a conversation with uh, the parish minister there, and so she and I are going to have a conversation that's open to well, I mean, open to anybody, but you know, inviting the congregation, um, anybody who wants to discuss this and and offer feedback as well. So we'll we'll collect that feedback um, as well. Great. And I'm Sanjay, I, I would love to be part of that. Sure, absolutely. Great. So um, we wanted to talk a little bit about planning for the October 27th meeting. I have you on the agenda for that, Susan. Um, all of this, of course, keeping in mind that we have no idea how many people to expect. I know. Um, and I am going to call on our um, good friend, Cl Clarissa Rowe, who has a lot of experience uh, running uh, public meetings. And Cl Clarissa, I'm hoping you'll be able to offer um, some advice or Sure, okay. sure, Susan. Um, but I think the most important thing to do is to welcome people, which is, this is a very good, committee to do that. Um, and I don't mind serving as the moderator if you want me to do that. I have run a lot of meetings and I would like Susan and Laura to be part of this running of the meeting. But I think it's, it's more to be <clears throat> open to hearing um, <clears throat> a lot of people talk. And, you know, I have no idea how many people will turn up and we should set some rules for how long people talk. I think it would be great to have a very short presentation of what the interim report is and what kind of work you all have done um, as, you know, like three to five minutes, which is, you know, daunting but sort of talk about that and say, you know, we are here to engage the public. And I loved what um, Jillian said because she is serving underserved people. And it's very hard in a public meeting to get a lot of people to speak. And I think, you know, having some sort of um, form that they can fill out when they're not because they don't want to speak in a public process is a very good thing to do. So I thank Sanjay for that. But I think it's, it's more just opening the floor and listening. And the most important thing is to set the guidelines at the beginning of the meeting, because you will get people that have kind of an ax to grind and you want to make sure that they don't take up the whole meeting. So, you know, and <clears throat> the people that are having an ax to grind actually have a lot to say and their issues should be investigated. I mean, one of the things that the, you know, I was struck listening to you all, the Human Rights Commission has been kind of our facilitator for police cons cons complaints for the last two decades. And whether they should continue that role is another story, but they have been 
the people that listened to people that felt they weren't being listened to. So I think just opening it up to people and saying, we're here to listen is the most important thing. And having a written survey or having a number to call, maybe Jillian's number, God help her, <laughs> would be a really good way of framing that debate. That, that sounds great. Um, Susan, do you know, you said Jillian was almost done with the form. Do we think that we'll have that to be part of like the email inviting people? Oh yes, that's that's okay. the entire point is that the form will be included okay, in great. every email invitation. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then because I'm crazy about language, um, Clarissa, this is not meant to be insulting to you. I think we should try to avoid saying people with access to grind. I think this is a really emotional. I'm just saying that to you, Susan. Yeah. You're completely right. <laughs> no, but I'm being too there, frank. There are people, um, <laughs> this, this raises a lot of emotional feelings for people. It's yeah, 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 deeply, yeah. I'm sorry. In, uh, on, on, on both sides of the barbell. I'm obsessed with women. Absolutely. Lifting. That's why I'm talking I've about had a barbells. long day. I'm no, sitting so, next to a dog who lost all his teeth today. Oh, Jeepers. Oh, no. And he's <laughs> Jeepers, poor little guy. So I'm sitting next to him trying to calm him down. So Listen, excuse Clarissa, my... if I'd been the one to say it, I would have used that phrase axe to grind myself. So <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> that's just, so that's all. But good for you. All. Thank you, Susan. So one thing that I've thought, I mean, obviously this is my first time like being a part of something like this, but I have watched a lot of school committee meetings over the last year. And um, the first, so when I first started watching school committee meetings, I thought it was, I didn't really understand why after their public comment period, there was no response from the members of the school committee. Like that felt sort of unsatisfying to me as just someone coming in and looking for information and answers. The more meetings I watched, the more I understood exactly why that is and that that makes perfect sense. So I thought in terms of ground rules for us as a committee, we should just explicitly say, you know, we're there to listen to take in whatever our community is bringing to us, but we're not gonna really engage um, beyond, I mean, I don't know if it makes sense to, if we do a presentation of the interim report to answer questions, or if we just wanna not even have that as a part of this at all, I'd be interested to hear what people have to say. Well, I'll offer, that I think people who will show up would have already read the report and time is so precious. My inclination is to leave as much time um, for public comment. If the moderators were to determine after a few questions that there is misunderstanding of the report, then I think that's a time to step in. But I, my own recommendation, and it's just one person, is to go in there with an expectation that we have an educated audience who has read the report. That works for me. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, and I think, you know, to Clarissa's earlier point about, you know, having sort of either a time limit or whatever, right? I think, you know, whoever, you know, that you guys as the, as the co-chairs, Right, can can sort of set that expectation from from the beginning, and we can sort of look at, you know, how big our attendance is, and and make and, you know, and sort of attempt to set that time limit to to match the attendance, if that yeah. if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Bob. The uh, the select board on the community input, they limit it to three minutes, as you know, and it's stated at the, at the beginning that they're not going to respond or take any action on it. It has to be an agenda item. And I think we ought to try to keep it to something like that. Because, you know, mm -hmm. if you have 50 people and they go off for five, 10 minutes a piece, then I don't know how long you get the Zoom going. 
I'm not going to take more Zoom time. We got it all night, Bob. We got it all night. Okay. I'm just, I'm just. just. Because I've seen the selectmen run into that situation recently where they had to go to about 1230. I mean, the selectmen went third. But anyhow, okay, that's it. No, I think I think that's a good point to say that up front, you know, set the expectations clearly makes sense. And I'm I'm also assuming just like Kathy said that the people who show up, this is not likely to be their first time showing up at a meeting for public comment. So I hopefully people will understand when we make those limitations. Michael? I think, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I just wanted to add um, I think it's very important in the public session to create the context so that everyone is looking at something a similar way before they go off with their point of view. I mean, they may be educated in terms of and sophisticated in their reading of it. I think it helps frame public comment by saying, you know, just to remind everyone we were formed to serve this purpose. Um, our charge was to do this and we want to give, articulate something about this just so that we're all in the same space to, to hold the conversation in, in, in a structured way. I think I, 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 I have facilitated community conversations and I have found when I've not provided that kind of structure, um, it, it, conversations go in, in too many directions that are not constructive for the larger group. So it would just be a suggestion of how do we think of what's the context we're setting? I mean, it's clear we've thought a lot about the process, but the, you know, people have busy lives. They come in for a couple of hours to something that they may not be spending a lot of time on. <coughs> and it would be helpful, I think, um, to, to help give that to them because otherwise it becomes, it potentially could become an inside game about what people think they know. Um, someone has to help hold the, the bigger idea and, and the vision of, of, of why we're here. I, I think Michael, that, I completely agree with you. And I think it's, I, I really think this is important. I think that Susan and Laura should at the very beginning of the meeting, talk about what our charge is. Because <clears throat> that's the most important thing to setting the tone of the meeting? Yeah, I think so. I, 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 that, I think it's, that's definitely a good way of opening the conversation and making sure anybody who hasn't read that charge recently or thought about it recently has it fresh in their minds. Yeah. The, the other thing I would add to that is, is, you know, on top of the charge, it's probably good to give at least some groundwork from, you know, of the sort of, um, you know, different versions of oversight, you know, covered in the report, just so that people are on, you know, have the same framework of language, right, it's sort of freshly in their head. I don't think it needs to be a huge presentation of every single thing, right, but I think uh, the, the, the three minute review of that might be. Well I'm wondering, I know that when we when we were planning to speak to the select board a couple of weeks ago, the plan had been for Carlos to do an abbreviated version of, of the presentation he had given us back in, I don't even know what month that was. Um, are you thinking something like that, like similar to that, like to what we would have given to the select board? I, I mean, I think if I, other people have much more experience with this kind of thing too, but it, right, to me, that sort of seems like the kind of thing that helps people get on the same page about, you know, when we're talking, when we're hearing our, when we're hearing their input later, but, you know. What do, what do other people think about that, Michael? I, I think whatever we decide to do, it, it should be short because people want to talk. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, uh, uh, I mean, I, I think we'll have other opportunities to share okay. other things that we've done. I think just organizing people and the focus, we're here tonight, building on, you know, work that's already been started. This is what our charge has been. We want to just 
likely tell you where we are and then we want to hear your comment. I, I think it gets people in there right away. We, we get the feedback we, we need because I, I don't think people are going to be coming just to listen. I think people are going to be coming to, to share what's going on. And because they're, they may not think going to our, our general meeting would be sufficient, but going to a public setting seems right. You know, time is precious. So, so that's what I would encourage us to think about. Okay. This is Carrie. Uh, I, hey, I apologize for being uh, so late. There was a problem. Um, and I've been listening to what's been said and have read the agenda and the different notes that came along. Um, and again, I, there are times I feel like I'm kind of out and left field with some of the things that I have mentioned that I have been um, aware of or concerned about or something. But I guess, and because I missed at the beginning of this, um, one of the things that I know from having worked with um, um, folks who are on different sides of the fence about something that, you know, one, they, people both feel passionate about. And, and, um, and I think, however, we put it out there that what we're doing is making this a safe place for people to talk. To share what they, you know, need to share, um, complaints, um, kudos, or something. But um, I do agree that there should be some kind of a, a time frame, um, not cutting somebody off in the middle of a sentence, but just that everyone gets five minutes or something, um, and that they are listened to with respect. And then, what do we do to respond to them? Do we do it as you know you mentioned about we're doing it in the moment, or are we saying that we will you know explore what they're talking about with them later? I mean, how do we have them to feel listened to, and that we're taking what they're saying seriously? Um, and I think that actually Jill's example of the first time that she answered a um, a call about this and expected to spend a half an hour and was actually there for over two hours is what made the difference in how that person then felt about going and listening, you know, having the chief say, I mean, it is setting some kind of a, a space that is safe and that somebody can develop some kind of trust in a very um, challenging um, uh, experience. Um, I know I'm, you know, I know I'm talking about people going into, you know, town hall and, and having a discussion and what have you, but I still come back to how do we make people feel comfortable saying things and people who don't agree with something that's being said, how do we help them to also feel heard and respected? Like I said, sometimes I guess, because look, oh, I think most of my training has been how to, um, you know, as a, as a mediator and also you know, doing groups and what have you, that it's just, um, it's just how we, how we set the groundwork for how people feel safe and heard and responded to in whatever way that is. Thanks. I, I think that, I mean, I think that's really important to, but it's, it's, Sanjay, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that you know I think that that's that's super important, and and I think that you know part of part of the the plan we have that's addressing that right is that we're co collecting mm -hmm. feedback in a variety of ways, right? I, I think that that's part of how we do that, right? There are some people who are going to be comfortable coming to a public meeting on October twenty seventh, right, and and speaking there. There are some people who are going to feel more comfortable filling out a form. Right. right. There's some people that are going to be more comfortable, you know, coming to a targeted, um, um, you know, invitation from, um, you know, Jill and and the DEI office. Right. right. And so right. I think, you know, that's to me, that's how we're managing to accomplish, um, you know, providing people the the safety they need yeah. or some measure of safety. Right. Uh, to hopefully yeah. give us that. Nice to put. Thank you. Their trust. Because it is important. It's super important. <laughs> it's how you make it work. Mm -hmm. Susan. As we're talking about all different groups, I would be totally remiss if I didn't also share um, <clears throat> Chief Flaherty 
Flaherty and I have been in touch about how to include police officers in this process. And um, I don't know if we've lost Chief Flaherty. Her camera's off. I, I think it's okay to say she is going to try and set up a meeting with the heads of the um, unions with us. So oh, great. we can also involve them in the process. So, so it sounds like, you know, we're going to have a sort of greeting and introduction, um, you know, sort of a laying of the groundwork, setting of the space, right? And then we're going to open it up and, um, right, Laura and Susan are going to sort of keep us on track, um, you know, gently guiding us, guiding whatever feedback we get, depending on how many people we have. Does that... Um that sounds good. I just got a text message from Carlos that he's had. If somebody can email Carlos the Zoom. I just did. You did. Okay. I just did. I just okay. saw his message. Okay. So he messaged you as well. Okay. Yep. Great. Sorry. Um, yes. Uh, sorry to take us no, off that's track. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, that's what that sounds like good. I mean, I think, you know, it's it. I think it's um, helpful that Bob said early on that the, you know, a time limit make stating a time limit up front makes sense. I think I was feeling sort of funny. Like, what if only three people show up? Like, is limiting them to five minutes seem overly like restrictive? But we have to start somewhere, and so. I think, I mean, five minutes sounds like a good amount of time to me, like, but, Anne, we're, I feel like you have an opinion. <laughs> um, I don't, five minutes seems like it could be a long time. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, let me do, let me do a little research on, on my Google, on my phone while I think about it, but five, five seems like a lot. Okay. Well, well, we'll keep. Yeah, I, 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 I personally, I think three is probably the right okay. number to, to start with, right? That matches select board and other things. And I, you know, again, my personal opinion, right, is that, you know, you should have a fair amount of discretion as the chair, right? If, if, you know, like somebody else said, right, there's no need to cut people off in the middle right. of their sentence, right? If, if people are you know, delivering a, a um, you know, an involved story, right? Let's give that a little bit of space to run. And if somebody is repeating the same thing over and over again, right? We can probably, you know, move right. it along at right. the three minutes. Um, that makes sense. Um, I, Rebecca Gruber has her hand up. Um, we don't usually have non-committee members speak, but did you have something in, I think uh, Bob wanted to say something and then oh, I didn't. yeah okay let's go Bob go ahead yeah the uh the three minute thing if only three people show up you can let them go for five or whatever you need to but okay. you, know, <laughs> you, have, you have 30 people True. listening to this, you have 30 participants then I think you have to oh, really yeah. <laughs> make that clear up front right but you know there's a, there's a lot of flexibility in that if somebody's making a valid point or you, you know let them go on with it if it's uh it's a small Group that shows up, but yeah, you can play it by ear. Right, that yeah. makes sense. I think having some, yeah, and having some what ifs in mind so that we know what to go to. So if a large group shows up, that we say three minutes. But again, even if a large group shows up, only three of fifty people may want to talk. So right, fair point. I, I think yeah. you know we could potentially say you know if we get through everybody that people could potentially speak again. Um, right, I was thinking, you know, yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. Well, another fair way would be to let them indicate that they want to when they log on. So that you'll know then how many people want to talk, not to prohibit anybody else from speaking, but it'll give you a little a sense anyway. Um, and so that you can take them in order of how they, they log in so that somebody's not mad at the end that they didn't call on me, they called on me. Right. You know. That's a that's an excellent idea, actually. Yeah. I could I can take that job as the, we can ask people to raise their hand and I can take a list Keep and track. we can move through. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's an excellent, yeah. excellent suggestion. Um, Rebecca, what did you have? 
Thank you for letting me um, speak. Um, the meetings that I've attended where there's discussion are either, as you've described, select board, open forum, you're speaking as if into a vacuum, or I've attended several um, meetings where there's specific questions that people are being asked to respond to. And from my perspective of attending your meetings, which I don't know if you've noticed, but I try to come to them, it would be that that I'd be most interested in contributing to. If there were specific questions you wanted feedback from the public, um, that that would kind of guide right. the conversation, as opposed to just pontificating on what I feel about defund the police or anything else, right? Oh, thank just, you. No, that's just that's my thought. <laughs> thank you, uh, Susan. I just want to thank you, Rebecca, for bringing that up because it's kind of silly that we didn't even think of it, given that that's the organizing principle that we have used in going to all of these other groups for feedback, which is we are asking um, of commissions, you know, what is historically, how does your mission intersect with the work of this committee? And then also, do you have any hopes for this committee? What are you hoping to see come out of the committee? And um, that is an excellent, excellent suggestion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have anything else on this before we move on? I think this has been really useful and uh, Susan and I will come up with a organized plan. Um, relevant to what uh, Michael was saying earlier is the next part of the agenda, which is to have a discussion on sort of where we are, um, our status as a committee. We've spent a lot of time hearing other people talk to us and learning and studying. And I think it makes sense to come back to the charge which I will go ahead and read for everybody so you have it in your head. And I'm reading this in part, I think the first question that we need to answer is, do we have the information we need? Putting aside the fact that we're about to have all these public um, forums where we're going to get more information. Uh, the study committee, the charge was, the study committee shall study the creation of alternative mechanisms for civilians to file complaints regarding police interactions, considering various models, including a police civilian review board independent from the police department with the authority and resources to receive and investigate complaints. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Said, said committee shall also review police services, examine the experience of comparable communities and consider the potential impacts of pending legislation. So I think the first question is, we've been doing a lot of studying. Do people, we've been asking a lot of questions. Are there questions out there that are still lingering for people or have we done our due diligence for that first part of our charge? And I will start calling on people if nobody. So I'm going to call on you, Sanjay. <laughs> yeah, I know well, you'll have something to say. Yeah, yeah I, you know me. I um, always have something to say, um, for better or for worse. Uh, well, the, the one thing I, I do think that we still a little bit have outstanding, right? You and Susan had asked me to sort of look at the, the data piece that we had um, outlined in our um, interim report, right? The, the, the data that we wanted to um, gather and and we have still some of those outstanding questions um that uh doug and sandy and and karen were getting to us um from our september 13th meeting september anyway our early september meeting right with, with them um, and so i think we're going to get a little bit of more information from that and then in terms of the data um you know chief flaherty has been super uh you know helpful and open and is starting is, is pulling together um, a lot of that for us, both this, some specific data and some explanations about other data. And um, I think that's going to be um, really useful information for the committee to have um, at, as we complete our work 
um, going forward. So that's for me that, that those are sort of the only sort of two um, outstanding sort of information pieces. Okay. Uh, well, and of course, public input, right? Okay. Um, Great. But yeah, I, th I think I'm feeling very comfortable personally, you know, just that we understand sort of the national context um, and the historical context. I'm feeling very comfortable um, that that we have covered that that part of it um, very well and, and have the information that we need once, you know, yeah, for, for that kind of discussion. So that's my. I'm going to start moving through people um, to see if I'm going to go to you Anne, next because you're the next square on the screen. Um, how are you feeling about, you know, the study part of our charge? I'm feeling pretty confident that we have explored and, and done a thorough investigation and study and that I, I feel like the next piece is just Sanjay hit it on the head, you know, really opening it up and getting feedback from our fellow um, Arlingtonians so that we can kind of go forward from there. But I, I don't think we can do much more without their feedback. Great. Um, Elliot. Um, I think we've certainly done our due diligence relating to the charge of the committee. Um, obviously, like, there's always more to learn, but I think like relating to the charge, I think we've done everything that it's asked in terms of studying. Great, thank you. Um, Susan, how are you um, thinking I, about? I feel the, the same way we've done a lot and I, I just wanna share personally, I came into this process thinking that I knew a lot and learned how ignorant I was at the start, um, to be blunt. And um, I feel like I've, uh, this, is, this has just been very educational and interesting. And I do think the committee has brought in a lot of different voices. Just admitting Carlos is coming in. Um, Chief Flaherty, I'm wondering if you think there's anything that, that we as civilians should have thought to ask about or look at um, from you or from your colleagues that we haven't we haven't done. It was super helpful meeting with Chief uh, the last meeting with Chief Wynn that helped give us a lot of information. But I just want to check in with you about if you think we're missing any big areas. So, so for the committee, Sanjay, Lara, Doug, and I met last week, and we went through the list of. Um, information and data that's been requested and we kind of broke it down and I explained how difficult things would be to get, how long it would take for things to get. So we're in the process of compiling all of that data now and I hope to have it within the next week for all of you. Um, I think having Chief Wynn and Brian Kaur was very helpful, especially for me and especially because there are two um, departments in Massachusetts that we can relate to similar in demographics and size. And um, I don't think there's much more information. I think that the data that you've requested um, will be helpful to everybody, especially going into the meeting um, at the end of the month. And to Susan's point, I did um, meet with both of the union presidents. We have two unions, the patrol union and the ranking officers. I directed them to the town website for this committee and told them that it would probably be helpful if they reviewed all of the minutes. And um, I think that they'll have some representation there as well. At the, at the end of, Oct at the October 27th meeting. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's great. Mona, do you have any outstanding questions that you think we need to talk about? Mm, not specifically. Um, but yeah, I just think I don't know, I just wanna thank you guys again for having the youth voice in this. I think it's been a really, really big learning experience for me. Um, and I'm glad that the community is coming together in this way. Great, thank you. Um, Kathy. Hi everybody. I I'm comfortable that we've done our due diligence. That doesn't mean we've done not done it all. I think the 27th may reveal 
somebody may say to us, yeah, but have you looked at, and we have to be prepared to say, no, that's a really good idea. And to, so we can't be firm that we finished the study part of our charge, but I think I feel comfortable enough to be able to say we have enough tools, we have enough um, in our toolbox to, to, to proceed to the next step, which is deciding what, you know, what might work for Arlington. Yeah. Bob, you are the next box on my screen. Follow up with Kathleen. I, I think we've gathered a good uh, basis for the information that we're looking for. The piece that's missing right now will come at the next meeting. Okay. And from that, when we're done with that and we take what we can out of it, I think we'll have a lot of information in, in, that we need to now have a discussion on where we go. Because we haven't had a discussion about any of it yet. We're just gathering it all. We've got all these pieces. And uh, I hope next, by the time we get through the next one, we'll have anything new that might need to come up, uh, whatever it is. It'll confirm what we've been doing or not. And, and we'll just uh, take it from there. I think we're in a good place right now with the information that we have. Great. Great. Clarissa. Um, I think we're in very good shape. <clears throat> I think the data you gathered is great. And I think Chief Wynn's <clears throat> statement <clears throat> last meeting with the similar demographics made a real impression on me. And actually how difficult it is to set up a, a structure that works through the political um, machinations of what goes on. I mean, he, he has to deal with different mayors. We just have to deal with different select boards and we don't change our minds as much on the select boards as they do with mayors. So I was very interested in, in what he had to say and I was grateful that he came and I liked the minutes. Thank you. Michael. <clears throat> Any outstanding questions for you? No, I, I, I think, I think it was wonderful. I, this has been a learning experience for me as well, and it was great to hear other voices from the Commonwealth and how they've done it, and <clears throat> all the research we've done. And I, I'll be very curious to hear what kind of feedback we, we get from community members. Yeah, Terry. Um, I, I have. Uh... I think that this is a group who's worked incredibly hard and to explore outside information to make sure that what we offer to the town or we put forward is, is something that will be beneficial and useful. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess um, the other thing that I'm thinking is that because it's the first time this has happened in Arlington, that it's very possible that um, at that meeting on the 27th, there'll be more things that maybe people want that we didn't think of. So in that being flexible about what's the next, next step for us as well. But yeah, I mean, in, in this, you know, you were all just really amazing people and certainly dedicated to the well-being of everyone, both in the town and participants in this group as well. Carlos, you're the, the next person on my screen. I think you came in in the middle of this conversation. We were talking about uh, just taking the temperature of the room about the study part of our charge, you know, and how close we are to moving on. Given that we're going to listen to community input and we haven't had that yet, uh, are there questions, outstanding research that we haven't thought of? that we would need to do or are we have we done our due diligence and ready to move on to the next steps up oh, you're muted thank you um i i think we have done a lot of work uh, it's 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 we we could not find out everything mm -hmm. even if we did if we had 5 years doing it but I think that we have 
collected uh, a lot of really great information. Thank you for, for inviting all the, all the people to give us a, a, a range of, of views. And I think that the missing link is exactly gonna be on the 27th when we hear from our community. And, uh, and I hope that we can, you know, that, that, that part of the outreach, you know, maybe, uh, is there anything that uh, we're really missing uh, that, that we haven't seen? Uh, and uh, that's, that's it. But other than that, I think we're, we're in good shape to, to take, you know, to the next step. Thank you. Sanjay. Hey, um, I just wanted to say something that, I don't know, maybe this will be controversial, we'll see. Um, I, I may be viewing the, the 27th a little bit differently than, than, than some of you um, in that, you know, I'm going into the 27th um, very much looking to, to hear, have we missed something? Right? Is there is there something that we've forgotten? Is there mm -hmm. some piece of information that we that we don't have? Right. Um, you know, but but I don't think that that's necessarily going to you know it's going to help me hear right the the concerns that the community has. I I think we already have a lot of the information that we need in to have the ensuing discussions. Right. You know. The community input is going to help shape that, but but I'm not expecting the 27th to be the sole determiner of what this committee then decides to do. Um, right. right. I, I just wanted to sort of put that out there, mm -hmm. right? That the 27th is important, right? right? Um, but but so is all the research that we've done and all the work that we've done up to now, and and right and to me, right, the 27th is helping to shape, further shape, right, the, the work and the research that we've done up to here. Right. That's, um, I mean, I, I think that's helpful because what I, part of what I was thinking as we, as I thought about having this discussion was that, you know, we, this is the first time we've all had to, to talk to each other in a while about all of this. And I would love to try to start the discussion of what, you know, what have we, we've learned about a lot of different ways of approaching the complaints process. What have people heard that they like, that they think might work in Arlington? We had a brief conversation several meetings ago, I don't know which one exactly, where I think we all pretty much agreed that the New York City investigative you know, fully staffed option is just not one that sort of makes that we can see working well in Arlington. So we've had a little bit of a discussion about one thing that maybe doesn't, isn't where we're headed, but maybe we could start talking about what people have seen that felt like, oh, this might work for us. If I could suggest, right, one of the things that I think it was Carlos at one of our earlier meetings talked really about like, you know, which function, right, we talked about these different models, um, but he sort of was talking about, you know, which functions, which functions are we interested in? And I, I, I think, you know, I would be very interested in, in having that conversation about what, at this point, right, again, no, nobody's asking for final decisions, right, but, but what functions are people interested in? Right. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have some good time to talk about that if people want to start. Yeah. I feel like I always talk and I don't, I don't want to be the one to, <laughs> to always talk. Anybody, Carlos, <laughs> where are you, where uh, have you thought about this sort of next step of our process? Yeah, I, I think that that is a, a good thing to do is sort of like narrowing down you know, uh, you know the easiest things, as you were saying, Laura, is <clears throat> things that really we know off the bat that uh, it's not for us, right? And then trying to do at least, you know, a list of what are those things that could potentially work that has some something that resonates, and then from there we need to see, you know, what are what's going to fit or not, right? So going Sanjay, what you're saying about the functions, is it going to be some sort of review or not? And if it's a review. What are we doing? 
is it something about collecting alternate uh, an alternate way of collecting uh, complaints, right? That maybe doesn't necessarily have to start in the police, but maybe somebody can come to this body and then they refer it to the police. Because maybe that's a way for um, for some people that may be afraid to directly, you know, complain to the police, have have access, uh, different access. Uh, maybe a, a point there is how to differentiate between, you know, the Human Rights Commission. What is this serving that is different from that, right? Why would somebody who come here and not there? That's, that's something that we need to to fine tune a little bit, and and then how how do we gather data? You know, how do we go around and work with, you know, with Chief Flaherty and and the police department to to this serve as a way of communication for the community to address something that can be you know some data that we collect and then somebody says like you know this data kind of is strange, <clears throat> can we dig into that and and it's a conversation that doesn't necessarily lead to a complaint. But it's just like you know some some patterns or something like that, some policies that you know that how is it that we the the community uh, have a way to uh, address some of these issues without directly you know maybe not going to to to, to talk to the police department, but it's like hey I want to address some things and then this body serves as a way to communicate and and go the other way around right so from the police department being able to communicate again to the community right and serve as a, as a separate body or something like that. I think Kathy wants to say something. No, no, I, please finish. I just want to know something. So I, I like where Sanjay is going on, focus on the functions, but I can't shake the fact that there might be a question before that. And the question for me, I, I, and I haven't, you know, I, I'm gonna say it in an inarticulate way is, what are we trying to build and why? What are we trying to accomplish? and why, which, and, 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 and sort of embedded in that is what is the problem if there, that we're trying to solve? And I'm not suggesting that the police are the problem. It, it, it may be that there's the absence of a vehicle by which citizens can, or residents can articulate. But I do think identifying the functions that are attractive to us, but I still think that there's a question before that um, because the question of what are we trying to build? Well, I think influence what are the functions that we are attracted to? Suzanne. Um, I would not have had the information necessary to inform the opinion I'm about to give at the start of this process. But um, I would say what problem we're trying to solve, Jill did a really effective job on answering yeah. that question this evening. Um, so that's one. And what are we trying to build and create? If we accept the premise um, that you want to create public safety in your community, you have to work with your police department. It needs to be a two-way process. There needs to be a mechanism for people who are afraid of the police, who come by that fear here, quite honestly, and right. it had, might have nothing to do with the Arlington police. It has to do right. with other things or other people. There has to be a deliberate, intentional mechanism by which that trust can begin to be built. And I don't know if that sounds pie in the sky, but I mean, the summer of 2020 surely showed us we have to make improvements change needs to happen. And, you know, on a local level, we have the power, we have agency, we're all working together. Hopefully we can create something that will work for many people. Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think I, oh, I talked about this to, to James Milan on, on Acme, but, you know, I sort of look at problems in two different ways, right? There is the there is the the emergency we must immediately clean up the mess problem and there is the how can we make things better problem right and it's it it's in the how can we make things better problem it's hard to you know you don't have something to point at to say this is the problem we're solving right instead you're saying we're here to make a better arlington right and 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 part of the way that we're making a better Arlington 
is is making sure that people can be heard and people feel safe, um, you know, bringing their complaints forward, um, and and that we have insurances, you know, that 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 we can tell um, a credible story about um, whether or not, and and you know, our, our police department is 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 great, right? Um, and, and I think you know part of what we're trying to do is is build that next you know, that next story on the scaffold of, of, of trust, right? We're not gonna, one, whatever we recommend or not recommend is not going to be the whole story of that, right? But this is, you know, what I'm trying to create is, is one more piece of that, of that trust puzzle, right? Um, you know, yeah. Love to hear from other, other people who their thoughts are. Susan, I see Bob. I saw Bob starting to go. Oh, okay. Let's hear Bob. No, I'm just trying to put some thoughts together on it. I haven't, uh, I'm getting more, a little more confused. Particularly, there are police complaints and uh, whatever it is. And, but then there are other complaints of mistreatment of people or their perception of it that really aren't police matters and how they seem to get, be getting embedded in this thing. Um, what, what, what do you mean by that, Bob? I, I'd love to understand. Um, may, maybe it's reading Jill's report. Many of the, she, she seems to get involved in a lot of complaints, uh, discrimination complaints and those kinds of complaints. And I don't think they're police matters, are they? It depends on who's doing it. Actually, Chief Flaherty, can I put you on the spot? <laughs> can you answer Bob's question? No. Bob, I think I need some clarification. So Jill works for the town and she does work with a lot of discrimination complaints, not just police complaints, correct? Yeah. Is there more to your question? That was my basic question. Yeah. So the report, go ahead. The report that she um, wrote, the memo that she wrote to the board tonight, talked about two complaints that she was directly involved in, that right. were related to the police department. Yes, I understand that. But then she deals with a lot of other issues surrounding sure. that aren't directly involved with the police. Sure, like housing and disabilities and right. things of that and matter. It seems, I get a sense that some of those kinds of things are being brought into this discussion. How so? Because it, 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 some of that's, uh, how so? Because you, you hear it being, they, they brought up some uh, complaints in, like, in her, Jill's thing. The, the, I don't know, it's just how I, I'm not, I'm having a problem uh, separating those complaints from what we're doing. So I think uh, when she was talking about her experience in different areas of town and in her job at, I think she said Children's Hospital, she dealt with a lot of other different complaints. And that's where she got her basis for writing this memo. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. For the recommendations, I think her background and experience informed her recommendations. Mm -hmm. And I think another point is that navigating, supporting residents as they navigate police complaints really isn't in her job description, I don't think. I could be wrong about that. Um, I, I think I'm, I mean, maybe I, it is, I don't know. I, I think I I may I may sort of be able to 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 shed some light, right? I I think I hear what you're saying, Bob, about the other complaints being brought in. I, I understand now what you're what you're saying. I think, and I, I think right. My understanding of of what Jill's report is saying to us, right, is that you know if you look at a lot of these um, insti right institutions where people are trying to be heard, right? There is a common framework in helping people to be heard in, in larger institutions, 
right? And and her recommendations are based on that, right? Whether it's police or a hospital system or a university or whatever, right? Being heard in an institution, especially when you're a marginalized person is difficult and right, her recommendations are how we can support doing that specifically um, related to Arlington police, you know, informed by how it works and, and how those problems manifest in lots of different places, whether that's police or other institutions. Is that, is that sort of what we're getting at? That's kind of where I, I was trying to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I and, and I think the common thread, right, is that we're talking about, right, large and, you know, large isn't the right word, institutions, right, where there's a, a set way and it is often hard to navigate that um, and, and providing people the right tools and the right um, way to navigate that is, is I think, uh, is part of our job. I think to go to what Susan was saying about, I mean, I was struck both reading Jill's memo, but then also hearing her talk more tonight. And I, the question that I, that I didn't ask that I now wish I had is, I mean, it's it's hard to say whether these things are or aren't in her job description. Her job her her job is such a huge one that I think, yeah. <laughs> like, you can sort of make the argument either way. And it, I think if I remember the memo correctly, she answers the phone when somebody looks up on the Human Rights Commission how to file a complaint so or who someone to talk to. And so at the very least, we know that there are people who are who are, who have things that need to be addressed who aren't going directly to the APD. Um, what Jill, what we learned from Jill is that sh she's able to then that helps people navigate and advocate for them and make use of the fact that we have a really receptive police chief who will spend the time. I mean, I was really struck by the description of um, the incident where Chief Flaherty like role played and video. I mean, that seems above and beyond to be like engaging in a role play. And I think that's really great. But those people, but th those two complaints might not have ever gotten to Chief Flaherty had Jill not been there to answer the phone. And I think we all know that Jill is working. I mean, her job is huge. And if there is a specific, if we can create some sort of method based on all these recommendations of everybody we've talked to, including her, of a way to make it a more explicit, straightforward way for complaints to be handled in that thorough, respectful way that we're seeing that they've been handled, I think that is a function that I would like, that I would be, I would feel good about. Susan. Just to kind of put a point on what you were saying, Laura, I read Jill's memo. I was very, I had the exact same reaction you did. Chief Flaherty, we did not know you had a second career in broadcasting. <laughs> and we, <laughs> um, it was like an accidental model of how something should work. You have people who are afraid. Somehow or another, they made it to somebody who was able to help support them through the process, and the police department met them where they needed to be met. That should happen for everybody. But it. I was so struck by the. I think. This, I think this isn't the case where the role playing happened, but the the neighbor dispute, the fact that the result of that is that that resident is making better use of the police department. And I think to me, that result is so like when somebody said already, like this is a two way street, we, we, need, we need each other, right? And, um, that person feels safer both in the circumstance that they came to Jill to complain about, but also going forward because she's now using the service of the police department in other ways. And I do think 
that to me, that's a, that's a goal that it, I, I think we, that people would support. I mean, we obviously don't have to, you know, we're not coming to any conclusions tonight and I don't, um, but I think if anybody, if people have other thoughts about these functions um, the mo or drawing on specific things we've heard about, that would be, I think it's a great time to talk about it. Especially, well, I'm can, sorry, can I, like, can I, but like framing going into listening to public comment, I actually think for me, this helps like prepare myself to think about what kinds of things people may bring to the table at the end of the month. Go ahead, Sanjay. No, I was just going to ask if, if I could, you know, if we could pick on the people who've been a little quieter since we've started this part of the discussion, right? And, and sort of, you know, see if, <coughs> see if they have thoughts about either the, the problem that we're, you know, or the, um, or the functions that, that people are interested in. Yeah, um, I'm going to pick on the high school students again, because I feel like uh, they're a whole, it's a whole population of people that are not often heard in many institutions. So um, Elliot or Mona, or I can just pick one of you to make you talk. Um, you can't what, make them talk. You can I ask can, them if they'd like to right. talk. I can't well. make them talk. <laughs> um, I can make them say, no, they won't talk. <laughs> um, uh, Elliot, are you like, what, what are, I know that you haven't had the chance to like really meet with your peers, but you know, you're in the high school, you clearly care about these issues because you wouldn't be here if you didn't. Um, what have you, what kinds of conclusions have you come to or what kind of functions could you see us recommending that would make high school students feel more heard? Um, so I'm just trying to understand the question, like something that the, this, this committee could do to allow people to be more heard. Is that kind of? Well, no, like something we can, we're, we're talking about what kind of recommendations we may come to, to ask town meet, you know, what, what, what kind of processes or bot, you know, if there was a body that we were going to recommend a, a, a committee get created, like, do you think that that would, how that would affect if, you know, the, your peers and thinking about their interactions with the police? Um, so like, a lot of the interactions with police would have in the school that that could be done to make like to go a step further. I'm sorry, um, I completely the, the yeah. connection completely cut out. So I didn't hear anything. Uh, I don't know if that was true for everyone. Anything yeah. you said up into interactions just now. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just I'll just go through that again. Um, I yeah, so I think like most of the interactions people have, or if they have like a problem with the police or something they need to talk about, it's with the school resource officer, um, mm -hmm. Officer White, and I think like he's done a great job of making himself available to people if they need to talk. But again, like it it's really difficult. Like if you have something that's so deeply personal to go talk to like a stranger that you really don't know. So I think like a, a step further. Okay would be to do something like you could have like a form online or something done through like the guidance counselors um right just to make it easier like if people have something they need to, they need to talk about like re relating to the police obviously great thank you idea. Mona do you did you have any anything to add to that or other? Um, I was just thinking 
that that was actually a really good point i think a lot of the i don't know the reason that people don't come forward a lot with things like this is because of that fear or like fear of judgment feel of fear of being like the only one that has had to go through it and experience um and i think a lot of the times we feel a lot more secure if we know that other people have experienced similar things um so i think it would be really incredible actually if the space could be created for people for students to actually come together with other students that have faced um i don't know interactions with the police that they want to talk about because i know that specifically in middle school there were a lot of I don't know, interactions with the police that i think were difficult for a lot of the students so i think if a space could be created and if um this space could actually be created from this group it'd be a great opportunity for students who felt fearful going to the resource officer or to their guidance counselors but i feel like they'd be less fearful if it was with other peers that knew about it so thank you oh, this is this is carrie again um i just want to thank both elliot and Mona for what you're saying because i think what happens is um and taking a look look at who's actually involved, who is it that we are trying to be a support to, that what an adult might come forward and say to somebody that they felt comfortable with or maybe didn't, I think that students um, aren't in that same place. I mean, like, I think the idea of peer work is just amazing, and that's where change happens. It's, it's uh, as long as we think that we're the only one, then it's a secret and it's quiet and then that festers inside of us and it doesn't it it, it makes us uh causes us to lose faith on some level like in in with adults and with the police or whatever and i think that you really touched on something both of you very very um very important and sometimes it's a favorite teacher you know, a guidance counselor, the resource officer, and sometimes those are not the folks who teens in the high school and even middle ground, middle years feel comfortable with. So, I mean, maybe that's another part that you all could be really helpful enough with us helping to figure out, but it still comes back to that sense um, of whoever, whoever is a part of this, I think it, you know, and I said this a long time ago, and I know it was something that I was told that we're going to talk about later, but who from the community will, will, will be there to be a support person, you know, for, the, for people who are talking about really challenging things, previous experience with police officers, um, being, uh, being intimidated by police officers, who do they go to within their community to feel comfortable or heard or believed, and then where does that person come in? And I guess what I'm thinking of is that oftentimes some of the um, various churches and, and uh, industries and what have you, and, uh, you know, have have input and a lot of faith and trust that people in there, um, you know, within that 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 group. Um, really trust and i guess i just think it's also asking a lot at times hold on one second sorry people that come together and then get up in front of other people in this meeting and talk about how they have been violated and they're from their experience by the police with no supports around them to help them be validated you know I'm, I'm coming more from the personal and the human interaction so i'm just kind of throwing that out and uh, you know and if you guys elliot and mona you want to give us feedback at some point i think that that would be really terrific you know how does it how does it work and, and what will help it to work and reach uh, people who oftentimes get really dismissed you know high school is <laughs> really challenging and so is it middle school and how do you know where you belong 
will you be respected and listened to? So, uh, sorry, I just, I just, that always feels like it's a piece that's missing, you know, with some of the, what we have talked about. And um, I don't know if we were gonna invite people beyond, you know, I, this, this meeting is gonna happen. Will we ask teachers or will we ask um, ministers or something? to come along just people who represent the different groups so are you i'm sorry Karen, you're talking about at informing our process i'm sorry say that part you're, again you're i didn't talking know. about asking these people from different these different groups to to give us feedback for our process i right. think i mean if they if they came along and they were able to to right be a support for folks who are either haven't said anything yet or do get up and talk about some of the challenges that they have experienced. Uh, you know, I, I'm probably not saying it right, but it's just the, you know, it's just the fact that um, to stand up with a bunch of people that maybe you know or you don't know and disclose things that happen to you that are personal can be a little bit overwhelming. Well, we are, I mean, I think, you know, we are having some, there are, there are going to be meetings that are not just the meeting in two weeks. So Jill's office okay. is working on setting up meetings with different constituencies. Sanjay is doing a program with uh, the first parish. Um, and hey, so hey, we yeah. are, there are, yeah. Yeah. Um, Michael, I, I don't know, are you, in terms of functions and thinking about what we've learned about in models of, of, of oversight or advisory committees, what have you started to hit on things that you feel like are the right, are, are in the right direction for Arlington? Uh, not yet, because uh, I was hoping to, uh, the meeting that I have with people next week okay. to really understand, you know, what our constituencies are. So I, I, you know, I have a personal point of view, but I really want to get more voices uh, and bring those in. And, and I have not yet. Okay. I'll have more to share at the next meeting. Um, Kathy, you sort of started some of this conversation by what is the, pro you know, bringing us back to what are we, what is the problem we're trying to solve? Do you, are you, are you feeling like we've made any progress there tonight? I think we've made progress. I don't know if it's about that question because I'm not sure how, um, first of all, I'm uncomfortable with my own wording because it suggests a problem and, you know, problems aren't, aren't good things. I mean, have we made progress tonight? I think so. I mean, um, you know, I like where we're, where we're going. I'm sort of excited about, you know, the real meaty part of our work is coming up. Not that what we've done before is, is not, but to be able to grapple with this stuff, to say, what is it that we want to build? I keep coming back to that. You know, we've been charged to be architects or to recommend, you know, an architecture Act for, for something that'll, you know, be useful and helpful and fair. And so I'm looking forward to that, that discussion. Thank you. I had one yeah. more little piece to, to, to add to that discussion about, you know, being, being architects. And I think, you know, there, there's the discussion about, you know, what are we building? There's the discussion about the specific functions that are in it. And, um, but I also wanted to share one of the pieces that I took away from our, our conversation with Chief, um, Chief Wynn last week. And that was, you know, really, um, you know, it sounded like their committee was having um, some identity issues in figuring out, you know, what could they accomplish and what could they do, right? And so, so um, having a variety of um, of tasks, right? So that there is concrete work that whatever thing the architect, right, is doing, um, I, I think is an important outcome, right? With with 
with those functions, right? Um, right. I, th I think part of their their challenge, right, was feeling like they could give some recommendations, but there there wasn't necessarily action, right? And so um, providing concrete action for whatever thing, you know, whatever structure we put in place, I think is um, something I'm looking to make sure, you know, from a health of whatever we architect <laughs> standpoint, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bob. Sanjay, um, you know when you are going to present your draft to the select board? Has that been Oh. We have not, we, we, it has not been rescheduled. I think Susan was in conversation with Steve DeCourcy to try to find when on the agenda we could fit in. Is that, I don't that's, think, are there any updates? That's or? correct. There, I have no updates on that. Process. Well, the reason I bring it up is it would be nice if that draft were made available. Maybe it is. To the, it is. Uh, any, any, it is? It's yeah. on, yeah, it's on the town website. Right. And on I, our page, I would hope I would hope that the people that are going to present on the twenty seventh have read it because that'll give them a lot of background as to what we where we've been and what we've done, in addition to your little summary of it uh, for what it's worth. That's all. Yeah, yeah um, the the interim report is is on the web. Oh, I should note for people that. Um, a, a reader of the report noticed that I had I had messed up um, when I created the PDF from the Word document, and a bunch of the links were broken. Um, and so, if people had had read the report um, earlier on, those the links, especially in like Appendix C with all of the, the things, those didn't work. Um, and so that I fixed that, and I I apologize to all of you um, for. All good. Representing good. us poorly, um, but but it's been fixed and it's good now. Good with it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think that maybe we've exhausted where we can go tonight here, um, and we have a lot of a lot. We've we've made some progress. Um, I do know, Sandra, you sent out minutes. Oh, yes, please. Before. Should we? Um, yes, we should. Approve. Let's get those approved so that we can. Um, oh, I think Chief Flaherty had something Chief to. Chief Flaherty. So uh, I know that I should have commented when Jill was still on and she talked a little bit um, in her memo about accepting anonymous reports. And I just would like everybody to think about um, going forward until the next meeting, what that would look like because there's a big difference. Uh, we accept anonymous complaints right now at the police department. There's a big difference between me and the select board and the human rights commission um, accepting anonymous complaints in a third party where someone can just go, there's really, you know, not, not knowing if there's putting in a complaint and not having to sign anything, I'm no penalties or perjuries and just complaining in general if they got a parking ticket or if somebody, they found that an officer was disrespectful when giving out a speeding ticket or something of that nature. So I just feel like there's a difference between accepting anonymous complaints at a police department and a third party. So okay. I'd like people to think about what that would look like. Great, thank you. Um, okay. Do you, uh, do you have the minutes, Sanjay? Oh, do I have to give you the right to share? Was I sharing the correct thing? Yes. I didn't, oh. I, yeah, so I didn't. You were sharing the minutes. Sorry. Let me try it again. There we go. Are you able to see it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so let's just review the attendance. This is the September 20th minutes. Um, I have Karen Bishop, Ann Brown, Michael Brownstein as present, Elliot Elkin and Carrie as absent, Chief Flaherty, uh, Laura, Jillian, Doug, Carlos. I have Mona as absent, um, myself, Bob, Kathy as present, Clarissa as absent, and Susan as present. Any corrections? <laughs> oh, and Doug left at some point to join the select board meeting. Um, and then I'll just sort of scroll through here. Uh, I had circulated these. I don't know if anybody had any corrections. Oops, I see a typo right there. Um, if there are no have... no changes or objections, does someone want to move to move accept to approve that? the minutes? And Brown seconds. Thank you. Um, so we can take a roll call vote on that. Uh, Sanjay. Oh, you can have Michael do it, right? Oh, I can... Michael, sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead. something to do. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, maybe you should do it. Okay. Um uh Sanjay Newton. Yes. Uh Susan Ryan Fulmer. Yes. Ann Brown. Yes. Elliot Elkin. Yes. Michael Brownstein. Yes. Kathy Rogers. Yes. Bob Rodokia. Yes. Carrie Fallon. Yes. Mona Motadi. Yes. So moved. They are, can be published. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> the minutes are approved. <laughs> yes. are approved. Minutes, are approved um, by, minutes are approved by unanimous vote. Oh, Thank there you, we Michael. go. <laughs> um, and uh, does someone want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. And Brown seconds. Motion moved and seconded to adjourn. I'll take. I will take a roll call. Okay, Laura. Sorry about that, Laura. Oh no Should problem. Ann Brown. Yes. Michael Brownstein. Yes. Elliot Elkin. Yes. Laura Gilson. Yes. Mona Motari. Yes. Sanjay Newton. Yes. Bob Rodicia. Yes. Kathy Rogers. Yes. Clarissa Rowe. Go. She's still here. I think she's gone. She's gone. Susan Ryan Vollmer. Yes. Carrie Fallon. Yes. Carlos Morales. I think he's gone as well. Regardless, it's a unanimous vote to, to adjourn passes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.